We're going to be weaving this morning on a 1930s union loom that was made in Boonville, New York. The first thing that I need to do is tie the warp threads to this front rod. So this will take a few minutes. What I'm doing is wrapping the warp beams, the warp threads, excuse me, onto this front bar to tighten them. You do it opposite sides to just give yourself some balance. And this is the time that you straighten out any loose, loose threads, threads that have gotten a little twisted. on the last bout here and once I have this last one tied on what I need to now do is make sure that they're all the same tension as you can see this one's a lot looser so I'm going to take this and I'm going to tighten it that's correct and I'll take this one I, I actually am probably going to go to every single one of them and just tighten them and tighten them yes and then when I feel like I have an even tension right. all the way across, yeah. I'll feel comfortable. See, saggy yep. baggy. Yep. I want them all about the same. And then once I get them about the same, then I have to go back and do a second knot to lock it oh, in. Oh, to lock them in. That's correct. Okay, I have all of my bouts tied for the first time. I'm feeling to see if I've got them all about the same tension. And they all feel pretty good except this one, so I'm going to tighten this one up. Good. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to do a square knot because I don't want these to slip. And again, I'm somewhat, going to somewhat alternate. There's no rhyme or reason to my alternating. I'm just going back and forth. Okay, I feel that my tension is even all the way across my warp threads. Now I want to get rid of these triangular ways that the threads are tied onto the bar. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some scrap and I'm going to weave these through, <clears throat> but I'm not going to beat them. Now beating means that I would be bringing this bar back to mesh the fabric. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one in and I'm going to put another. I changed shafts so a different set of threads that were down are now up. And you'll notice that I'm leaving a big space. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want this to spread these threads out evenly. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to beat this very gently. Pretty good, but not enough. So I'm going to put some more in. I'm going to do that again. I'm just going to put it in and I'm not going to beat it. With my second set of spacers, I now have been able to bring my warp threads to where they're all nice and even. So now I'm ready to start weaving the next rug. What I'm doing right now is I'm throwing the shuttle with carpet warp to make the header. This is where the fringe will be created from. It starts with the rug so that it's got an, a bound edge. I'll do this 20 times, I will throw this thread, which is the same thread that is the warp thread. Okay, I've started the header, now I've started weaving my rags. I have two picks of this sheet, and I'm going to start this next shuttle. These happen to have been old sheets. They were quite bright when they were big, and put someone donated them, and the rag is turning out to be lovely. Contrast.
And I'm not worrying about whether or not the color is up because this rug is reversible. On the one side, it's dirty, turn it over. And it will be one of the famous Cooperstown Farmer Market rugs. Okay, we've, we've woven this much of this rag rug with the sheets. I'm going to now just throw this a couple more times, and I'm getting very close to this part up here, which is causing me to have a, um, a little harder time. So what I'm going to do is I need to advance it. I'm going to just throw this one more time, and then I'm going to want to advance this. Okay, there's mechanisms with the loom that have brakes on them. I'm loosening my brakes, and now I'm going to tighten it up. Thank <laughs> you. 